what I'm talking about. Um, chat is your channel to respond and we speak English, but we might switch a little bit to German because we don't know the English words in this area and we will help each other to find the right terms probably. So that me let's now start from content wise. So I have two gentle, not gentlemen, two people here in my call I would like to introduce. Um, first of all, we have Bettina. Bettina, Professor Dr. Bettina Mölring. Mölring, sorry, I speak English already. Your name <laughs> from Mutesius University of Fine Arts and Design in Kiel. Mm -hmm. um, I know Bettina from my studies actually as an industrial designer. And Bettina, maybe you can tell us a little bit what brought you into uh, teaching design work. Mm. Yeah, um, yes, hello. Um, yeah, I, wa I just wanted to um, describe these, the, the different steps I've been taking through my career being a designer or studying. So, uh, yeah, as, yes, as Jens said, um, um, I started uh, studying in Berlin at the Hochschule der Künste um, in Berlin. And um, the main design attitude which was in the group where I was studying was that design is concept. So um, I think that was like the initiation of my, well, being, as a, being a designer. And by that time, that was quite new. Um, so uh, today it's like, of course, there must be a concept uh, in, within design, but when I went then, um, in, at the end of my studies in Berlin, I went for two years to London for, for a master course at the Royal College of Art. And by that time, it was there, um, design was very product orientated. And I would say design was by that time form and rendering and making flashy models. So then after that, I went back to Berlin and had after some time the possibility to go to Singapore. Uh, and was lecturing there for one year. And um, after the experience in London and then going to a completely different uh, cultural context, I really had this feeling or it really struck me that um, the cultural context is very important um, for design as well. So um, after that, that was in 2001 and two, um, I went back again to Berlin and then from 2006, um, I, was, I applied for a professorship there in um, Mathesis Kunsthochschule in uh, Kiel. And uh, since then, I, so my work is basically to teach uh, the students or to lecture or help the students to find, um, to understand the design process, so design as process, and then um, to find their individual way. Uh, for this design process. So that's one thing. And the last thing I would like to say um, is that I, in the end, it's for now, it's, um, it, I think design is, shouldn't, shouldn't only like try to, to give answers. I think we have to, to ask questions. So that's for short. <laughs> Thank you, Bettina. Then we have on my screen right of Bettina, maybe different on yours, Professor Thomas Stegmann from Mack Media University of Applied Science in Berlin. Thomas brought you in design, uh, teaching this work. Um, we all came from the same school, so we all um, studied in Hochschule der Künste, University of Fine Arts in Berlin. Um, I then and, and what I studied there was um, the first class that actually started to do with interaction design. So it was the um, uh, class that was having actually a new tool, the computer, and try to kind of understand what that meant in design terms. Um, after that, I went to London. I worked um, with IDEO for four years um, under Tim Brown, and then um, worked long time in Hamburg in different kind of software companies and web uh, consultancies. 
And I've been teaching now for eight years, and I'm a professor since six. Um, and I was hired more or less to kind of teach design thinking and teach the, the, um, the changed approach that we now have to design. Um, and that's, um, and, and the reason why I teach is uh, I just can't help it. I really, I'm, I'm teaching if I'm paid for it or not. I'm, I just, um, that's just my way of being. So. Okay. Um, yeah, I think uh, I met Thomas uh, not at university, but although we did, uh, we studied at the same university here in Berlin, the University of Arts, but in a software company where I already worked in the digital area. And my idea to offer this talk was uh, I, I, my teaching uh, context mainly that I'm coaching and training people and design thinking. That was my, my work over the last nah, about 10 years almost already. And uh, very much focused on design thinking. But with this backing, uh, originally I studied industrial design and communications. And then I worked in some design agencies. And I always found it a bit odd that uh, in the design thinking community, we talk a lot of about design thinking what we don't talk so much where it comes from because ideo was originally an industrial design company too and uh, i see a lot of links and what i wanted to explore with my colleagues here is uh, what what are the things that are still there that come probably from bauhaus and another station in this process is the ulmer hochschule für gestaltung we'll talk about that too what is relating what is similar maybe or what can be compared and what is really different and what might be missing today or what can we learn from the past that can be part of our education uh, around design thinking that was the idea of this talk and there we're going to start now actually with uh, explaining a little bit what teaching at Bauhaus and at Ulmer Hochschule für Gestaltung was about what we know about it it's a Werkstattgespräch that means we have no really a uh, definite position so we might develop it during the talk and of course you are invited to add your questions and comments during the talk to the chat okay let me open the first uh, picture that is kind of discussion starter for us um, we won't keep it on the screen the whole time but oops sorry so but for a while to start the discussion, um, I hope you all see now um, a screen. Please give me a sign by the chat, if not, with a big circle, because it's a bit difficult in Zoom to monitor what's happening on the other side. A big circle saying building in the middle and some people standing around there near the Bauhaus building. Not yet. Okay. No. Mm -hmm. You can't see it? Okay. No, I can't see it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Neither can I. Okay, once again. Ah, yeah, it's not right. Okay, no, no. Yes. Now? Yes. Better? That's, better. that's good. <laughs> okay, we always have to keep track on this whether it works or not. Uh, yes. Hmm. What can we, maybe I have first asked Bettina a little bit about it. What can we learn? What do we see here, actually? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, the, um, the um, diagram on the left is, uh, or for me on the left, is, um, is my it's one of my favorite graphics, <laughs> I would say. Uh, it's, it sh shows the, uh, the um, structure of the learning in uh, at the Bauhaus on the right side we see we see some uh, like iconic uh, images of of the Bauhaus we see the Dessau building and uh, we see this um, this mysterious woman sitting in a Breuer chair and we see uh, the posse with only one one man uh, one woman about a lot of men and if you um, well if you know people you would spot like, for example, Gropius and I can see Mohel Notch and other people who are very famous uh, in this uh, context of the Bauhaus. And um, while well, looking again to the, to the, uh, um, to the diagram, um, 
the the structure is that you you go through the studies uh, while going from the outside into the inside so we have the basic course outside and people come from outside into the Bauhaus and then work their way through uh, to the middle and the in the in the center we see um, we see building uh, in German it's uh, it just sa says the Bau das der Bau uh, which is a bit different to building. So um, the their bau is more iconic. It's it's a place. It's it's a space, and it it doesn't it wasn't made uh, or wasn't thought to be something uh, only con concrete. It's also about structures, I would say. Uh, one thing uh, which is I think very important if you look at it is that we see a lot of things which are material so and it's um, the Bauhaus was also about uh, crafting and um, there wasn't like discussion because design wasn't there until there that time so uh, before there was only art but then with an industrialization suddenly we had a new discussion about handwork and about craft and also about uh, production and how we can bring production into industry. So maybe that's enough. Uh, maybe so, uh, yeah, I, I go, I would, I would take part of this discussion. Uh, so we agreed that we do a little, little science here when we want, because it's always difficult when we want to add something. Um, maybe for the, those of you who, who are not so so much in the detail yet just a little introduction to Bauhaus it was actually a, 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 the idea of, of a new way of education of artwork so, so the the, cause, uh, the the traditional art academies it was copying other art but in at the Bauhaus they started to say art starts with craftsmanship and it, it's about um, Working with materials that's that's shown on this uh, picture too. It says clay, stone, wood, metal, textile, or glass. And this basic course was very famous. Maybe some of you saw the TV series about Bauhaus. Uh, there were some very influential teachers that were all artist people, especially Johannes uh, um, Itten, uh, who did uh, was very influential here. And it was a course to develop your skills. To, to of creativity and of or your personality as 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 a, as a creative person, it was not purpose driven in the beginning. This basic course was, I think, half a year or one year, and built on that, you you could do the, the next step. And in the beginning, it was this craftsmanship dominated education, but it changed over time. And as Bettina said, it, it's um, I would say yeah, when uh, when it, uh, when the first shift was from Weimar to Dessau, because Bauhaus changed its location, it became more towards industry. It was the society of industrialization at that time, the Roaring Twenties, and uh, it became something like one of the first design offices too. Because in the workshops they did prototyping. They called it here in this chart. They called it testing site. Um, but uh, the, in the in the workshops they built furniture and uh, they built models for architecture it was a lot of live it was new it didn't exist before this kind of work for industrial purposes um thomas maybe i can bring in your perspective yeah. too i think it's um i think the basic course is the, the big circle around everything is one thing that the Bauhaus, I think, has left to the future as a legacy. And most art schools have like a basic class now, and that wasn't really the case before. Um, what I think is maybe more interesting to me is that the basic course got lost in Bauhaus over time, so by the end they didn't do it any longer. Um, that's one thing because it really became more and more um, an industrial design and architecture uh, school under me on a row in the later years. But in the beginning, especially when Johannes Itten, because I saw the same movie, I think, um, he was really all about um, the artist. And he was about not um, pushing people into a mold, but letting people grow to become who they really were. 
and that was that was revolutionary in you um, because before that it was like uh, Ian said it was all about copying um, and therefore developing step by step have a slight new idea of how it could maybe done be done a little bit better. Bauhaus tried to be revolutionary new and and found try to figure out how it could be done in a completely new way. And I think this is a really interesting parallel to today's design thinking that this kind of there was this revolutionary thinking uh, in it and it was like the old way how we used to teach people isn't right anymore and that was um at least at the beginning i think one of the important points of Bauhaus. um and maybe something that we can learn from a basic course for example um i've seen um uh, in the wonderful exhibition in berlin and the berlinische galerie there was um loads of artifacts from the pupils in Bauhaus, and there were loads of drawings and i've even seen pictures now of people doing two-handed drawings and I find it really interesting, this is something that we do today um, in our um, classes in fashion design, that is still use the very same drawing techniques that have been taught in Bauhaus, and the same idea about learning how to make a shape your, your own. So that's yeah, really, uh, quite interesting. That's, that's, yeah, and yeah, that, that's for something else what struck me, because when we did uh, the basic course in the industrial design at the University of Arts in Tattoo, it was a long time ago, it was in the 80s, uh, there was actually a basic course too, and the mm. professor that teach us how to play with clay, how to play with wood. Uh, there were workshops in the university. I think they still have this where you could do work with silver, with metal, and so on. It was really great for me. And at, uh, when I learned about it later, what Bauhaus was and what Ulmerhofische Gestaltung was, I thought, okay, it's still this concept of the Grundkurs here, at least in the classic design education in Germany, which is, did not really so much affect the design thinking community yet. Although I think there's a need too, to um, work with materials or at least with the digital uh, version of, of, of craftsmanship, with tools at least, which, which is not there. It's, it's not there yet really. We do some warm ups and um, Maybe things like this. I, I brought this from this exhibition too. Yeah, it's original Bauhaus Übungsbuch with all the Grundkurs Übungen, and I like this one especially. Uh, I don't know how to translate it. It's um, ice ballad on paper or so. So you really take take a pencil and do some dots on the paper, and then you do this. Yeah, just like it's like meditation. And I remember I sometimes I do similar things in workshops when people don't like to draw because we need people that draw very often in our design thinking workshops. And I think Bauhaus can uh, had in this, in this exercises here are in this book, we have, for example, a hundred exercises to warm up and yeah. to train your creative skills. I think something like this would be interesting to emphasize more even today. Um, yeah, please, please bring in you know, my, my, my discussion partners, please just add and build on, on I, I would, I would not like to, 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 to point on you every time I, I need your uh, comments because we wanted to simulate kind of talk show here. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe, um, just one thing, um, before maybe then we, we switch to the HFG, um, diagram. Yes. Um, I think it's still, um, for me, the essence of what we have been talking um, right now is that um, we always, we have a body and we need to interact also with our body and to work with our body. So if we talk about crafting, uh, you can always uh, wonder whether, how, how is the percentage between, between like technical and intellectual and, 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 and crafting really. But in the end, um, I think the most important thing is that we, we really have to use ourselves as, as bodies or as persons and interact. Um, and um, I think that's for, for, for all of uh, the schools we are, we are talking now. So in the end, uh, we also need in the design thinking, uh, even if it works different to Bauhaus and HFG and other um, places where you can uh, learn the the methods of design still 
we um, we doing we have to do things which we do, sometimes we don't think um, they are like they go for an aim, but still you need them. So. <laughs> Okay, and may, um, okay. Before we yes, I will switch to the next one. Maybe one one more point from my side. What I found very interesting too is this kind of uh, naming. Either they they called in the later stage, in the middle stage, where Walter Gropius of Walter Gropius was um, the 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 founder in a way of the Bauhaus as an architect. And in, in the second stage in this in Dessau, where the building was built that you see on the slide, um, he called, and when it was opening towards the industry, the manufacturer companies and, and, and designing for them, at least furniture and things like that, um, he said, we have, we are a laboratorium, a lab. And mm -hmm. it's reminded me really much on, on nowadays because I work in a lab here in Berlin. Today we think it's very digital, but at that time it was really prototyping with tools and with materials. And, and, but it has the same idea that it, it, it's just an early stage of a product that will be then mass manufactured later on. Okay, but now let's maybe switch a little bit to the next station of this of the story you would like to tell about uh, what came out of the Bauhaus. A lot of people after the war went to the US, like Walter Gropius and um, Mies van der Rohe and um, Mohor Naji. And uh, he even Albers. established, Albers, he even established there uh, um, a, a new way of teaching, which called, was called the new Bauhaus and which was influential in America and the design schools too. So it spread there, but it stayed a bit in Germany too. And that's the next, which is not maybe so much known as the Bauhaus. Oops, sorry. We have only three, three pictures. So that's the second one. I apologize for the bad resolution, but it was the only visual which really showed the, the circle, the original circle, how it was created by the Ulmer Hochschule. So what was the Ulmer, the HFG so-called, what was the HFG about? Any comments from my co-discussion partners? Um, maybe I'll start. The really interesting thing is that they changed it around. So in the center now is the basic course. And then they don't have uh, materials out anymore, but they have disciplines like um, um, architecture, um, product design, visual design, and information. And then the outside is the politics. And so, so they are not coming from the outside in, and the, the holy grail is a building, but now they are coming from, we are starting with foundation, and then we go over the disciplines in order to change the world. And that was um, the, the very different approach they had. At least that's my take on it. Maybe one, one sentence. Um, all the teachers that we had in Berlin are teachers that had been educated in Ulm, and all the teachers that educated in Ulm came from the Bauhaus. So in a way, we are the grandchildren. Uh, and, and most German designers in some way are grandchildren in design teaching uh, 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 sense of the Bauhaus teachers. Yeah. But I'm sure that Bettina has a really interesting take on this as yeah, well. Yeah, um, I was just wanted to um, make some comments on the pictures. So um, I guess a lot of you know know the um, know the so so called Schneewittchen Sarg, <laughs> which is um, yeah like an iconic thing uh, or iconic design of the HFG. Um, it's quite it's quite early. I, I to be honest, I don't know. You mean the you mean the audio in the right corner, yeah, right. Uh, yeah, the high fee thing okay. with the yeah. with the <laughs> with the records. A lot of people don't know anymore what records are, but anyway, um, <laughs> yeah, that's true. I've <laughs> I've I've uh, experienced it. So, um, but if we compare to uh, the Bauhaus, um, as the Bauhaus had uh, their iconic building and their own building, their own school, a large school. In, um, in, in Dessau, the same happened with Ulm. So uh, the HFG was, was uh, founded and uh, they, there was a lot of money coming from America. And, um, and they, they were building just from the beginning, um, they were building their own, their own house, their own university. 
and they also had like um, iconic places for for the for the students and also for the uh, for the uh, teaching for the professors or for the teachers. So there is um, there's a parallel thing, and then there are also if you see this um, this. Um, Kanne, what's how that how's that called? <laughs> the, um, uh, coffee can or yeah, yeah, no, so no, can is wrong. Huh? Coffee, 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 coffee thing. And but this <laughs> is this is a part of a whole system. So I think that's that's um, th that's something very important. That HFG was uh, the Hochschule für Gestaltung in Ulm was very structured, and they did everything uh, like molded it into systems. So uh, this uh, this coffee can is part of a of an entire world of everything you would need in a hotel or in a restaurant. So it it would it, it's able to stack. You have um, dimensions or proportions which which, which fit together, um, and so it's and it's also a system. It's like a family, a product family. So that's something new. And then uh, I also want, would like to um, to comment on what uh, Thomas said already, that we have like uh, sociology and politics and psychology and so on. So um, from from uh, Bauhaus coming from Bauhaus, where we said um, art and technique is the new unity or the no, the new um, yeah the the, the core. Um, it. Uh, still in in Ulm at the HFG, there was a lot of more uh, scientific thinking, and like also new um, scientific um, areas like sociology um, has been like in the beginning of the ninth of of the twentieth centuries uh, was sort of uh, getting um, very important. And also, uh, like psychology was a sort of new um, um, uh, Wissenschaft, um, science. And um, so it was also um, like new or different um, anchor points into other, in other, into other um, fields of thinking and working. Yeah, I would like to point out here again a little bit the context. The Bauhaus was founded after the First World War and it was another moment of we want to have something new and it was the beginning of the Roaring Twenties and then it was just in the midst of that um, with this idea of for the masses, we do products for the masses, good products for the masses, new ways of building Licht, Luft, Sonne, as the architect said. You have some of these uh, buildings from influenced by the Bauhaus ideas here in Berlin, for example, Beruf Eisensiedlung, if you know this, Bruno um, Taut. Um, and then uh, the, the Römer Hochschule für Gestaltung was founded uh, originally by uh, the sister of Sophie Scholl, which all was murdered um, uh, by the Nazis and her sister wanted to found something an educational institution to have a new ways of thinking in politics and humanics uh, human humanities and originally because she she got to know Max Bill which was one of the teachers of the Bauhaus it became more the idea of uh, uh, um, a school for for design and and architecture so it it, it then became something like the first educational entity to to educate designers as we know it today because in Bauhaus was were not so clear design profession is although we would call it design today it was not at that time so much the term yet but here it, it became that and it was starting with the same people like Max Bill was more an artist and Johannes Itten and Josef Albers did some of the first courses which were teachers at the Bauhaus too uh, but then it's what 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 uh, Bettina pointed out. Then it became more of the, for a while this more scientific driven industrial design process. Um, but the way of 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 educating was similar. People lived on the campus and they shared a lot together. It was really like Bauhaus was similar as as far as I know, a very um, strong community and was not only about um, doing the the pure. Um, edu uh, the pure studies, but to live together and to develop an attitude. Um, and 
maybe this to to do the dots a little bit with thinking i mean both of them which was new had project work so that that means you have some basic capabilities but then you do a project was not called a project was uh called differently i think at ulm it was already called a project but it was, was a different term for this so working practically to prototype something as a as something that is your main task and it was still part of my studies you had these basic courses and you had your project and you have this nowadays in a lot of studies and especially in design thinking it's just all built on projects as far as i understand you mean the current bauer school which courses powers offers for design something no it's uh, sorry we call we are only talking about the history i pick here a, a question from the chat which courses Bauhaus offers for design. Um, we cannot, we don't know this because there's still a Bauhaus now, an entity, but it's not a proper university anymore. We are just relating our talk to the historic Bauhaus, which doesn't exist anymore since nine, uh, 1933. So we okay, don't but know about to, to answer the question is, um, yeah. I, I'm sure I, I, I leave something, but uh, it was like metal a workshop and then uh, it was uh, wood. And, um, and uh, so it, it, it be in, in the beginning or for the, for the whole time, basically, it was like you just went in and it was basically all the same. At the beginning, it was more like design and products. And later it turned more into what it's Bauhaus for Germans um, 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 uh, whatever. In German, in German, <laughs> in German, German understand is that it's about architecture so it's design in 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 whole and uh, towards the end it was more about architecture if you talk about uh, departments or whatever and um, what I wanted to point uh, out again is that uh, when the Bauhaus was in working there was an industry but um, the way how to to this oh. um, I'm sorry I, I can't see you anymore so somebody else has to talk <laughs> okay and then uh, you Thomas yeah I'm happy happy to take over so I think ultimately we, we are we're here to kind of talk about the connection between design thinking today and inspirations, I think, from Bauhaus coming over, potentially coming over Bauhaus, or the, the, the way how Bauhaus taught students is only partly applicable today. And in, in a way, it's not even related properly to design thinking. If you kind of, if you see, this is like the circle of the, the Bauhaus, and then in front of it, the circle of the, of the um, uh, Ulm, uh, Hochschule in Ulm, the design thinking just goes almost vertically through them because it doesn't really matter. Um, there's nothing he doesn't care about craft, which I think is really interesting. At least it doesn't say it, it talks in prototyping about it, but it's not the design thinking process doesn't even deal with it, which I think is um, oh, interesting. Okay, but maybe then different. let's, it's the right moment. That's why I changed the, um, the screen, the picture, the third picture we have here about design thinking. And uh, I think we have about 10 minutes. Uh, left uh, to, to pick up this a little bit and explain elaborate a little bit on design thinking uh, what i know about the history of design thinking you see here hopefully on this picture on the left down corner this business week title the power of design was from 2004 and the the big story says that Hassel Plattner, which is the guy right of this uh, the, the, the the leader of german software company sap saw this article and read this in the plane and that's the story at least and uh, said i have to know get to know these guys they should help me to, to make sap a more user-centric uh, yeah our products more user-centric and more usable uh, we need this and then uh, they started to work together and still i, I know some reports from sap they still struggle with it they have their waves of uh we have more focus on users and then less again more business again and more users again so they have, they have a long story uh, now about introducing uh this mindset into their company and it was driven and that's where my link is it was driven by making the products better but these were software products 
And this is my thesis here uh, that uh, design thinking found his, his trigger in the traditional industrial design area because the company which was represented by uh, um, Tim Brown and, and, and Tom Kelly, the two guys on the title of this uh, magazine, that was IDEO, that was an industrial design company. Uh, Tim, uh, Tom, uh, Tom, Tom, is it Tom, Tom, yeah? Tom Kelly was a electric engineer by education and he, he did an extra study about design at the Stanford University, I think that was the story. So, and then be, they became by the digitalization uh, of uh, the early one uh, and the, the, the work uh, for digital topics, they became more aware of the, the specifics of what digital needs. It's, it's my assumption at least. And you see this little laptop here on the, on the picture, which is from uh, Bill, the design from Bill Morgridge, the British more bridge more more british designer and educator okay. as well and he was uh, a co-founder of ideo and uh, other stories of ideo this agency says they were they worked earlier for the um, apple uh, mouse they made it better although they didn't invent it it maybe thomas has some stories of ideo because he worked there but ideo was for me the link of the traditional industrial design uh thinking and education and and the the things that they were doing to design thinking because on some point and triggered by digitalization they found it is, has to be more interdisciplinary it's not possible to just one person is, is designing everything it needs an interdisciplinary approach and this has to be teached and that's where, to my opinion, design thinking emerged from. Um, maybe some like add, a, additions Bettina to this. Ring. Yes, I'm um, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I was lost. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's, I, I, I maybe I just um, put back, come back to the point I was making that um, we have to see uh, the development of design and also design teaching uh, it's there is a is a is a big link to industry industrialization and so on so just to come back Bauhaus was sort of the beginning of the industrialization um, and then HFG was um, really in the middle of consumerism and um, uh, yeah, and now we have, um, with the design thinking, there is, uh, again, another industry. Um, so uh, what happened with, for example, with, the, uh, with what uh, Jens talked about, um, the work of Bill Mogridge and, and his, uh, the first laptop, so to say. Um, so there was uh, something, a, a completely different topic was coming into, into design which is interface, is interaction. Um, beforehand in the Bajos, we had concrete products uh, and you, you, you could see and um, uh, you can see and feel them as straightforward things. There was nothing behind it. Uh, and uh, when um, IDEO came into, or when interaction and interface and computing and so on uh, were sort of developed then, um, there was um, the, the inner things, the working, the function, the, the programming and so on, which you couldn't see was the main thing. So it was a, it was a, a, a massive change of, of topics and of uh, things you had to think of. So I think you have to keep that in mind. And just one thing, uh, because uh, I like the other uh, diagram so much and to find this this little circles the six circles of the design thinking um which is nice that we have like sort of all these bubbles <laughs> and they are configurations in different forms so bauhaus coming from inside to the out uh, from the outside to the inside then the hfg from the from ins from the center then through the departments uh, into uh, science. And now we have like uh, steps which come each by each after each another, but still you have these loops. 
And I think that's for me as, as designer and teacher, this is something I think that's very important to, to, be, to understand that um, you have a process but um, you can always, you, and you always have to go also back or, or, or skip something and go forward. So it's a free, like the ice skating uh, drawings in a way, yeah? Which uh, Jens just showed us before. Um, so um, yeah, it's another structure and it's another way of working really. Um, but maybe just just a question. What what do we think can we take out of the history of Bauhaus and apply to to a modern design thinking? So can we make design thinking better by looking in the past? Um, and I think I have one example I'd like to push there. Um, Bauhaus in the very beginning was just about um, finding your footing again after World War One, which was changing or destroying the the, the known world for most people. Um, we don't have this similar situation. However, we are also in a crisis situation. I'm not talking about Corona only. I'm talking about climate change. I'm talking about we, we are facing crisis. And the interesting thing is that design, especially in Ulm, was all about um, just being part in a consumeristic, consumeristic world and uh, playing this, this role in selling more products. Uh, today, selling more design. What is interesting that um, IDEO or design thinking companies increasingly start actually putting um, social elements in it. For the, the early Bauhaus was also about making design for the masses, right? It was about, they never achieved it because it was um, the taste levels and the Bauhaus were so advanced that normal people simply didn't like it and also couldn't afford it. But now um, they try to kind of do something that then much later on became furniture and design for the masses. And in a way, design thinking also needs to, or could, um, take this revolutionary um, spirit from the Bauhaus and try to kind of make design thinking and change it to make the world a better place now to deal with climate crisis, to deal with the, the, the current corona issues that are, that are multiple. Kind of, we have this, uh, uh, I think we have a point in time which has some similarities and we can, we can use some of the spirit of the old times to apply it to our modern design thinking. Okay, I would I would like uh, to point out on these links uh, from my side as well. I think what is a similarity, what was new in the whole education about art or design work was uh, that you integrate different disciplines, uh, at least I think the project work as I call it, that was already starting at the Bauhaus. It was much more developed in the Ulmer Hochschule für Gestaltung and towards a new profession called the designer. And uh, with the design thinking, uh, it was it actually, I, I know the education at the D school here in Potsdam. And it's, to my opinion, it's all built on project work, on practical work in a team to do, to, to, to have first a short project and a longer one and the next one. And, and during the project, you can do little, uh, additional courses but mainly it's expected that you somehow find yourself how you do this so this is similar but what is different to point this out again is this this craftsmanship and in the modern world I would say digital craftsmanship this is nothing that is so that has no as I know is not part of the education and design thinking and that but I think it could benefit from it especially in this basic course uh, stuff which we a little bit find again or still find now in what we call warm-ups we call it always warm-ups and we say okay it's just to bring people but when you do it uh, more often um, you want to uh, connect uh, the warm-up to a specific activity and when for example you do drawing after this or prototyping with some materials it's good that you do a warm up around these materials so that you have some craftsmanship to work with these. I think we could include this more in our educational idea of design thinking, which was very much driven besides by digitalization. Not only that Hustle Platner and SAP gave the money for the D schools, but things like in 2007 came the iPhone, and after this, there was big, still a big uh, increase of design thinking. 
as a, as topic and it's still it's still on the go now and i think the explanation is that we are still in this digitalization it takes still a long time till we see it as sorry patina i'm i'm done yeah <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I was. I just wanted to make one last remark. Um, I think it's it's important to um, yeah to know that uh, Bauhaus and also the Hochschule für Gestaltung in Ulm, there were schools, it were, it were colleges or universities, as you would like to say. And design thinking is a method, mm -hmm. and it's no. also. School too. It's, it's a school yeah. now, yeah. But from the beginning, it's 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 and still, you come together in teams. You bring teams together or people together, and then work for for at least a shorter time than a study. So that's that's what I want to say. And it's also design design thinking is more really for just doing it straight away. So uh, then, for example, in universities. You can also go la 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 and do a lot more experimenting and so on. So there is more free space. Maybe that's something you could also um, think about. How could we implement more experimenting, uh, more more freedom in a way? Then um, so I mean I remember that you have been when I've invited you for to Kiel uh, to work with my students. Um, it was it was always like go go go, <laughs> which is yeah, good. Action. Yeah, Momentum. action and yeah. so on. But sometimes it's it's nice also to like to to have the the, the opportunity to explore, yeah, or to do something which might not aim directly to what you need. You know, that's that's yeah, that's something I just wanted to say. Okay, <laughs> okay. so we have about uh, five minutes left officially in. Some people will step out of the next session already. So I would ask you maybe for your last sentence. Um, maybe I can I can do something like this. Design thinking can learn from Bauhaus that. Maybe you can add to that sentence <laughs> as Sorry? a last statement. Bauhaus? Design thinker, design, uh. design thinkers nowadays can learn from Bauhaus and Ulmer Hochschule für Gestaltung that. Ooh. And complete the sentence. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Wow, okay. Um, what can you learn? No, I, I, I'm just... <laughs> can I try? <laughs> yeah, I'll do I think, maybe um, after Thomas. Thomas. Mm. I think the vine thing, uh, Bauhaus put the, for the first time the human, the individual in the center, um, which didn't really happen before that much. It was about copying a master. Now it was about yourself. Um, and I think that design thinking as a main method um, is in a lot of cases not working that well. So I think design thinking needs to focus again on individuals and people and in order to enable individuals to shine their best. And, and that is the promise that design thinking sometimes can deliver. And if it does, you have really cool and, and, and interesting results. Bettina, something to add from your side? No, thank you. <laughs> no, no advice no. for the design thinkers. So then I do myself. I would say yeah. design thinkers can learn from Bauhaus and Ulmer for Gestaltung that um, uh, some craftsmanship, ever it's digital or analog, can help uh, to have better results and. Um, um, and that, yeah, I think that's the main point I see that that this can help. And and as I will really would collaborate, uh, elaborate this usage of digital tools and and analog uh, materials mm. helps. To, yeah, the other point was we can learn from them how to develop what the ideal people call creative confidence. That means yeah, in this basic, a, yeah. it's this basic work of this materials and this testing out without purpose. You can develop what is in you as a creative person because we assume it's in everybody, but you have to practice it a little bit. And that's what we can learn from, from the old days. <laughs> okay, saying this, I would say thank you to all our listeners and especially, of course, to Bettina and to Thomas for joining me in this discussion. Um, 
And um, to get a little bit uh, a feedback, I would ask all of you maybe to think about shortly um, what you would type as a feedback. And in all in once, when I do a countdown, put it there and then we say stop. So I said, think about something what you would do in the chat. One, two, three, now. <laughs> 